Hey y'all, it's another Getting Real with Ashley Dawn, and I want to talk to you about the hand of God on my life. Today, Pastor Russ, shout out Pastor Russ, you're awesome, love you, um, he was talking about the Rechabites and how they had a legacy of blessing, that the hand of God was upon them, and he was talking about being dedicated and how when the hand of God is upon you, you are protected. Not that life doesn't happen to you, but that God is with you and that you're never left alone, that God is always with you, going before you, going beside you. And it just really got me thinking, a lot of people, you maybe that's watching my video right now, may not know my story. You may not know how God has literally been with me my entire life. Um, we sang a song today, you know, all my life you've been faithful and it makes me cry every time I hear that song because it's true. All my life, God has been faithful. Not that my life has been easy. It definitely hasn't. Not that my life has been without hard times. It definitely has had a lot of hard times and a lot of things, some things that I don't even share about that I go through and I cry myself to sleep and nobody ever hears about it because it's just between me and God. I do not share everything. Yes, I'm a communicator. Yes, I'm a speaker. Yes, I try to share things um, as I feel led to, but I don't share everything. There's a lot that goes on in my life that I don't share. So, but God has been faithful all my life. I have never walked alone. Even through the fire, even through the storm, even through every bad thing that has happened to me, God's held my hand through it. That's why I'm still here. You know, walking through betrayal, walking through losing my dad, walking through different members of my family being sick and losing them and you know walking through just hard times walking through financial hard times not being able to pay my bills not being able to you know do the things that I, I needed to do or going through health scares and you know with my skin and different things and God's been faithful no life is not perfect but God is faithful and when I was before I was even born my mom was praying that she would be a mom and that she would have a baby and she went through a lot of hard times and when God gave her a baby the doctor said nope well the first the doctor told her she would never be a mom she would never have a baby and she said nope I'm believing God and so she prayed and prayed and prayed and she got pregnant and the doctor told her that I was a tumor and they wanted to operate that I wasn't a baby that she wasn't pregnant well my mom didn't believe them praise God and she had a lot of complications with me. My umbilical cord dropped after my neck. I had macronium in my lungs. I was purple. The doctors basically told my dad, listen, you're going to lose your wife or your daughter. Which one, you know, do you want to keep? Do you want to try to keep? And my mom and dad agreed me. Thankfully, God allowed my mom to live too because I cannot imagine what my life would have been like without my mom. And so I had a, a hard go even before I got to this world. But as soon as I came out of my mom and my dad grabbed me, he looked at me and he said, I'm your daddy. And he smiled and he gave me back to God. He said to God, she's yours. We give her to you. We dedicate her to you. She's yours. And so the moment that I came into the world, I knew because it was spoken over me that I belonged to God. And so growing up, Yes, I listen to my parents and I love and adore my parents. And even to this day, if they told me not to do something, I'm not going to do it. If they told me to do something, I'm going to listen because I adore and love and respect and honor my mom and daddy. They're my best friends. And the love of my life is the love that God has given me through my mom and dad. But I grew up knowing God was my dad, that God was my heavenly father. And I had a closeness with God that even though me and my dad were best friends, I didn't have that same closeness with my dad. I didn't have that same closeness with anybody, not my mom, not a friend. It was me and God. It was always me and God. I talked to him when I was little. I wrote letters to him. I sang songs to him. I wrote books. I went to Sunday school. Every house that I've ever lived in, my next door neighbor has been an usher. And they've taken me to church with them every time the door has been open. When I was a little girl, I was going to Bible studies with 80-year-olds. No lie, I was. And I loved it, and I thrived on it. When I was a little girl, I would wake up early in the morning to watch Les Feldick teach me about the Bible. I was blessed 
to grow up under the teaching of Dan Betzer and Revival Time and Dan and Louie and all of his teachings and, and sermons and plays and making the Bible come alive for me. I had incredible Bible school teachers and in vacation Bible school and Sunday school teachers. I still remember every lesson I learned in vacation Bible school. I still remember a lot of the lessons I learned in Sunday school. I remember flannel grams or flannel graphs and and I remember Spence Baptist Church in Maryland when I would spend my summers on our family farm. I remember, you know, going to, to Spence Church and, and learning about that. I remember volunteering when I got old enough to help with the little kids. I remember being in youth groups and doing uh, pool tournaments and billiard tournaments and, and going away to summer camp with the church. And I have been surrounded by God and godly people my entire life. It is no accident that I am 30, almost four, and I am following the Lord as diligently as I am. Am I perfect? No. Do I fail? Yes, every day. But I love the Lord, and my life proves it. I don't have to tell people I love the Lord. They see it. I don't have to tell them what I'm doing. They see it. If they look hard enough, you can see what I'm doing. I don't need to brag on every, you know, platform. Oh, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm volunteering here. I'm No, you can see it. Be a part of my life. You'll see what I'm doing. I don't need to tell you. But I am living the life that I am because of the godly mentors that I've had. In high school, in middle school, in elementary school, all throughout school, God has placed godly teachers in my life to encourage me, to inspire me, and to breathe life into the dreams that God had given me. I don't take that for granted. I don't take the fact for granted that I am God's daughter. That's a gift. God's hand is upon my life. He has protected me. No, my life hasn't been perfect, but God's been there. You know, and people say, how could you love God? You lost your dad. You went through a divorce. You, you lost this. You don't have any money. You don't, you don't have this. You don't have this. You don't have this. I love God because God loves me. I don't love him for what he gives me. I love him for the love that he showers over me. I love him because I'm his child. I know what he's done for me. I know that Jesus laid down his life so that all my sins would be forgiven. He didn't have to, but he chose to. I am so grateful for God's hand in my life. And no, it's not easy. Today, Pastor Russ was talking about how the Rechabites had to say no to a lot of things that everyone else was saying yes to. A lot of worldly pleasures. There's a lot of things that my friends are doing on a daily basis that I don't. And no, it doesn't make me better than them. It just makes me a little different. My entire life, I've chosen not to drink alcohol. I've never drank. I've never drank wine, never drank beer, never drank anything. And I'm not going to. Because that's a choice that I made as a little girl. That's a choice that I made between me and God. And I normally don't talk about it. Because it's nobody's business, for one. And I've gotten a lot of flack for it in high school. I'd go to a party and people would be like, hey, what are you drinking? Coke, soda, right here. Wait, what do you mean? You, you don't want, you want a Jack and Coke? No, I don't. Soda is fine. Water is fine. Juice is fine. I don't need those things. My life is full without them. Oh, you want, you want to do some drugs? No, I don't want to do drugs. I don't need that in my life. Oh, you want to, you want to go watch this dirty show no I don't need that in my life you want to go to this club you want to go you want to go here you want to go to the strip club no I don't need that in my life I don't want that in my life does it make me better than you no it just makes me different I don't like mashed potatoes does it make me better than people that do no it just makes me different my life is different Samson his life was different Samuel his life was different Esther, her life was different. Mary, her life was different. Joseph, his life was different. David, his life was different. Daniel, his life was different. Solomon, his life was different. You look at the people in the Bible, their lives were different. Some of the people that did the biggest things weren't seen. A lot of things were done and they weren't seen. Nobody saw them. Nobody saw them happening. But it was faithful obedience in the quiet places. So many of us 
are faithful in the loud places. We are obedient in the loud places. We want everyone to see what we're doing. We want everyone to hear, you know, about our latest accomplishment. We want everyone to see the last time we donated something, the last time we volunteered. Oh, look what I did. I'm such a nice person. How about you be obedient in the quiet places? How about you be faithful in the quiet places, in the places that nobody else sees, in the places that nobody else knows about? How about that? It's hard. It's hard to be faithful when nobody's watching because you don't get their encouragement but you get God's encouragement he sees everything that you're doing he sees everything you're not doing too he sees you saying no to things that you could be saying yes to he sees you saying no to people that you could be saying yes to he sees it all our God is so faithful he loves us so much. And all he wants is for us to show him that we love him too. For us to be faithful too. It's not easy to be faithful. Every day you have to say no to your flesh, to your sin nature. When somebody gets snappy with you, you have to say no to snapping back. Sometimes that's hard for me, especially if someone hurts somebody that I love. But I know the life that God has called me to, and I know that it looks different from my friends' lives. And I'm okay with that. Doesn't mean I'm better. Doesn't mean I'm worse. Just means I'm different. The hand of God is on my life. And if you see it, if you're watching my videos and you're like, Ashley Dawn, how do you love God so much? How are you so close to God? How, you know, how can you hear from God? Well, I spend a lot of time with Him. Some days more than others. But I've spent my whole life sitting at his feet, being in places of ministry, serving, helping, listening, gleaning wisdom from older, more experienced Christ followers. As a child, I sat at the feet of 80-year-old, incredible men and women of the faith, warriors of the faith. And they shared with me what worked and what didn't. They shared with me their testimonies. My mom and dad have been through a lot. They have two of the most incredible testimonies I've ever heard in my life. I sat under their teaching. And no, it didn't look like a Sunday school service. It looked like holding hands and crying a lot of days. But it also looked like trusting in God. And seeing God's hand move. And seeing God's hand move. And watching miracles happen. I know that God is real because I've seen him prove himself over and over again in my life. God's hand is on my life. It's been there since before I was even entered this world. But God and my daddy partnered together the day I was born to say she's yours. And I'm so grateful. That's the greatest thing my daddy and mom ever did was give me back to God. Because my entire life has been submitted to God leading me. Not me leading me. Not anybody else leading me. But God leading me. Let God lead you. Submit your life to God. Ask God's hand to be upon you. Dedicate yourself. You may be saying, oh, I wish my parents did that. But they didn't. You can dedicate yourself. You're an adult. Dedicate yourself to God. Set your life apart for God's glory. Ask him to put his hand upon you. Ask him to lead you and guide him, you. Ask him to have his way in your life. Ask him. Ask him. Whatever you want, ask. It says in the Bible, you have not because you ask not. That's in Matthew. Ask. Ask God. Dedicate yourself to him. Lay your life down for his glory. I promise you, he will amaze you. And just like Pastor Russ said today, God will protect what's fully his. If you're fully God's, he wants to know it. He doesn't want to share you with the world. He doesn't want to share you with Satan. He wants to have you all to himself. And he should. So I hope this encouraged you. You are seen. You are celebrated. You are loved. God loves you. And he wants to lead you and guide you and be with you in every moment of your life. I'll catch you in my next one.